I just shot an Egyptian wedding with the Sony FX3 and in this video, I'm just gonna share with you my initial thoughts about what I think about the camera. The first and the most important to me is dynamic range. It is a very noticeable difference that this camera has way more dynamic range than anything else that is this size and able to produce a similar result. As you can see here, this is the progression of how I used the Sony FX3 throughout the day. And as you can see, these images are completely usable. This camera has dual native ISO, which means there are two ISO levels that this camera will perform the best at, 800 and 128,000 ISO, which virtually means you can shoot in the dark. And as you can see by the images you're looking at now, these are very usable images that were shot under very dim lighting in the middle of the night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can see clearly by looking at the images produced, this camera has remarkable dynamic range. Moving on to exposing for S-Log3. Now, most of the time I spent practicing with this camera before the wedding was spent learning how to expose S-Log3. This was the first time that I've been able to be this hands-on with footage like this from producing it to color grading it. So I took it upon myself to test out multiple scenarios in multiple settings to see how this camera performs and how you should expose it. So I've found a solution, something that works really well for me that I would love to share with you. And this is how I properly expose S-Log3, the images that you're seeing now. I went into my custom settings and changed my Zebras to 90%. I then created my own custom Sony to Airy reference let. This is a custom one. If it's something that you want, just leave a comment down below and I'll make that link available to you. So what I've found is that Sony footage looks the best when it's slightly exposed to the right. And I would even say 0.3 to 0.7 stops would be perfectly fine. Anything above that, you'll get too washed out of an image. Just a little bit is perfectly fine. You don't have to go a lot with Sony Log 3 footage. I expose my images by leveraging the tools first. I trust my tools to do the job and then I verify the image on the screen. Screen. When paired with my Sony by Airy conversion LUT, which conditions me to slightly overexpose while still having a great looking image on the screen. And then with some additional color grading, the image looks beautiful. The next thing is how portable and lightweight this camera setup is. I was able to carry around this camera on a gimbal all day. And after 10 to 12 hours of shooting, and I busted out some serious dancing that night. Man, Egyptians really know how to throw down for their wedding. They had some serious energy. So it's portable and it's lightweight. It's a very powerful camera and a very small form factor. And Sony knew exactly what they were doing when they built this camera. They knew that there were filmmakers out there who wanted to get an amazing image, but also wanted something portable they can just stick in a bag and the same goes for me that's why I use a very minimal bag with a very minimal setup and I can still achieve great results and if you're new to this channel feel free to like comment and subscribe because that does help grow the reach of this channel now let's talk about my setup all of the gear that I used to make this film throughout the day let's start with the camera bag I'm using the National Geographic photography sling it's a mini camera bag that's very well crafted beautifully made and I'm able to fit my camera inside of the camera pouch that comes with the camera bag the Sony FX3 goes inside of that little tiny pouch that is so unique that brings that sense of Africa to your creativity. It, it just reminds you that there's a wildness to what you're doing. I'm not sponsored, although it'd be great to be sponsored by National Geographic. It is a dream of my wife's though. So I can fit the Sony FX3 inside of that camera pouch in the bottom of the bag and then the 50 millimeter 1.2 G Master. I didn't know how many batteries I was going to need, so I bought a total of three batteries and I had a craftsman in Poland create a battery case for me custom design so that I can fit two SD cards and two batteries with me in a very stylish and fashionable way. Um, it is a custom made thing. You can't really find it anywhere else. So if that's something you guys want, again, comment down below and we'll do a Kickstarter or something like that if there's enough want or need. So the most important filter that I used, my secret weapon, are you guys ready for this? It's an IR cut 
filter because it keeps your blacks looking black and your white looking white and all of your colors will have perfect color clarity. I use the Simamod IR cut filter to get the best quality out of my Sony FX3. Paired with the IR cut filter, I just stayed in house and started to use their Araya mist filters, the 1 8th. They have a great solid build and they have this whole James Bond thing going. So they feel and look good on the front of my lens. Now I wanted to see what this camera would do when it's paired with a polarizer because polarizers typically shift the blue and the green in your image. So I used the Peter McKinnon mist ND filter combination. I was flying the Sony FX3 with the 50 millimeter 1.2 G master Sony lens on the DJI RS2. And this is the perfect combination for filming weddings. In my case, you get dynamic range, you get amazing colors, you get the power of a prime lens, exact sharpness with perfect focal clarity. No chromatic aberration, no distortion. The Sony 50 millimeter 1.2 is an absolute must for maximizing the quality of your image with the Sony FX3. Now when you're filming weddings, it's important to have all your custom buttons set up so that you can change your settings to be comfortable and confident knowing how to operate your camera during a wedding. If you're interested in learning how I set my camera up, comment down below and we'll make that happen in another video. Now when you're running and gunning, you need to make sure that you can monitor exposure quickly and accurately. So I created a Sony by Airy LUT that allows me to monitor proper exposure on the back of my camera while still getting a properly exposed image when I bring it into post-production. If you're interested in picking up that Sony by Airy custom LUT, comment down below and we'll make that happen in the next video. So how does the Sony FX3 match up with some of the cameras that you have seen me use on this channel? Now, I would still prefer shooting with the red Komodo and then the Sony FX3 and then the Blackmagic 6K and then the Canon R6 and then the original Pocket Cinema Camera. I believe you would rank them in that order as well too, based upon what is important to you as a filmmaker. Final thoughts before we summarize and wrap up this video. Did I make a good financial decision when I purchased the Sony FX3? And the answer is yes. And that's because the style of filmmaking that I do the Sony FX3 complements my workflow the best. And now if you're right on the fence and you're considering whether or not you should buy the Sony FX3, if you already have the R6 or the R5 or something like that, and decide whether or not having this kind of camera will improve your workflow and make your workflow faster. By investing in this camera, will you land more clients? By investing in this camera, will you be able to have more of a write-off on your taxes so you don't have to pay as much to the man? Why should you buy this camera? Just question your decision in the first place if you're interested in buying the camera. All right, that is all for me today. Question time. What questions will you guys have for me as I travel across the country filming at the Sony FX3? I would love to hear your thoughts. I really love hearing from you guys. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe because it does help grow the reach of this channel. Now, if you wanted to pick up anything that we talked about in this video, just comment down below and I'll get all of that situated for you. As of now, that is all for me. And until next time, stay motivated until I see you in the next one.